Okay, thank you. And um, now we are turning to the next speaker of today's um, lectures. And this is Arndt Kupers. He's a master of very precise and short uh, talks. So I think we, uh, we, will, uh, we are very eager to, to hear some of your notes you, you've taken about the question, um, the corona pandemic and the limits of tolerance, limits of in brackets. It's um, your floor. Yes, thank you, uh, Rolf. Um, yes, you give me, uh, you gave me a hint that uh, our time has advanced. Uh, okay, I understood everyone. Our meeting speaks English, right? Um, then I will also switch into English and try to make my presentation uh, in English uh, without consecutive translation. I should only need uh, half of the time, I think. Uh, Michael Fetko has thankfully uh, already made a translation into Ukrainian. Uh, that we could deliver uh, after our uh, meeting. Um, okay, my paper uh, may be, or my presentation uh, may be a little bit uh, provocative, um, as I do want to speak about the limits of tolerance. Uh, uh, the occasion for these uh, really very short reflections um, uh, is a pandemic uh, and the current uh, political discussions uh, in Germany. Um, mm, one of the uh, iconic uh, images of the corona pandemic will probably be remembered um, the uh, extraordinary moment of prayer of Pope Francis um, stepping in front of uh, St. Peter's Basilica uh, in March 2020 uh, and giving the uh, Obi at Obi blessing. Um, during um, his, his brief uh, speech um, at this occasion, the Pope said, uh, I quote, uh, like the disciples in the gospel, we were caught off guard by an unexpected turbulent storm. We have realized that we are on the same boat, all of us fragile and disoriented, but at the same time important and needed all of us called to row together, each of us in need of comforting the other. Uh, that's the end of the quote. Um, this boat metaphor is traditionally often used in Christian social ethics to explain solidarity. Uh, and solidarity is not just one value among others in, uh, in um, church, church social teaching, sorry, uh, but one of the three fundamental social principle, principles alongside personality and subsidiarity. Uh, is solidarity the third social principle uh, in Christian social ethics and um, Catholic social teaching? Um, and the principle of solidarity in the traditional reading means that, uh, at least in our kind of modern societies, the individual good and the common good are inseparably uh, interwoven. And this gives rise to an ethical duty to assume responsibility for the common good. Uh, so we could say <laughs> that the principle of solidarity uh, in the Christian social ethics reflects society as a community of destiny and for this reason, as a community of responsibility. And the pandemic uh, is an instructive lesson uh, that this is an appropriate way to look at our society. Because um, that's what the, this pandemic has shown us again and again, wave after wave, that individuals cannot protect themselves effectively unless everyone else also takes protective measures such as wearing masks and today in particular getting vaccinated. Uh, on a global scale, uh, this issue as an issue of tolerance is relevant when it comes to the worldwide distribution uh, of the vaccines. In Germany, however, it has been apparent for some time, and I believe this is now or will be also the case in the Ukraine, 
that we have another problem. Namely, the problem that many of those who would have now the opportunity to get vaccinated do not want to do so. Vaccination, however, is the way out of the pandemic. The only way in which we do not risk many more deaths on the collapse of our health systems. And, that's, and that is where our issue of tolerance comes into play. As an increasingly urgent question is how we, as a majority society, deal with this minority that has so far refused to get vaccinated. Do we tolerate this or are we reaching the limits of tolerance here. And I firmly believe uh, and want to ad advocate today uh, that, we, that the second is the case, uh, that we are reaching the limits of tolerance here. <coughs> the problems, Epide epidemiologists, I, I can even speak uh, this word in, in uh, German, <laughs> Uh, epidemiologists uh, tell us that in view of uh, highly contagious variants of the coronavirus, we need a vaccination rate of 90 percent, 90 percent of the people to, to achieve uh, herd immunity and, um, uh, and, and thus bring uh, about the end of the pandemic, 90 percent of vaccination um, across uh, the people. And this is the reason why there is, meanwhile, an increasing discussion in Germany about making vaccination compulsory by law. This has long been rejected in the public debate in Germany. Uh, the prevailing opinion was for a long time that compulsory vaccination is not compatible with a liberal society and that we must respect, that we must tolerate the free decision of the, win of the individual against vaccination. However, our German government and the leading persons across all democratic parties in Germany are now step by step and increasingly moving away from this opinion. And I would like to argue here that from a social ethical point of view, this is the right thing to do at the moment. In my view, compulsory vaccination is not only possible from a social ethical point of view, but it is now even necessary. My reasoning for this provocative thesis, um, tolerance as a social ethical principle depends on reciprocity. Radical opponents of vaccination in Germany increasingly lack this tolerance. Markus uh, uh, mentioned uh, in his speech um, and also in his introductory words uh, the Querdenker Bewegung, the Querdenker movement, the Cross Thinkers movement, the Maverick movement in Germany. This is a group of people who even deny that there is a pandemic. Uh, and these people do not leave it at their personal decision against vaccination, uh, but they spread misinformation about vaccination. They organize these demonstrations where they do not follow the security rules. They even threaten doctors and political decision makers. And my thesis is there must not be tolerance towards those who themselves behave in such an intolerant manner. On the one hand, for the sake of the common good, and secondly, to prevent a cannibalization of the social resources of tolerance. We must not tolerate such intolerant behavior. But I would like to go a step further in making vaccination compulsory across the board, not only to put the radical opponents of vaccination on their place. I also maintain that the private free decision against vaccination 
can no longer be tolerated in this pandemic. For even freedom in the state cannot be separated from the principles of the common good and reciprocity. Unfortunately, this is often misunderstood and this has to do with a, I would say, truncated concept of freedom that has been often propagated in the 20th century and is still being propagated. I also address this matter in my contribution to our book, so I can make it uh, at this opportunity uh, quite short to, to make my argument. Um, Friedrich August von Hayek, one of the godfathers of neoliberalism in the 20th century, put this understanding of freedom in a nutshell. I quote, freedom as the absence of coercion. Huh? Hayek says, freedom is the absence of coercion. And he explicitly emphasizes that this freedom is not to be equated uh, by, with the absence of worry and hardship. Let me give you another quote. I quote Hayek. It is important to understand that we can be free and miserable at the same time. It is true that being free can also mean the freedom to starve. That's a quote. And in this line of argument, of course, being free can also mean falling ill with COVID-19. But other liberals, less economist libertarians and more classical political liberals, such as Raymond Aron in France or Charles Taylor in Canada, have sharply criticized this one-sided negative understanding of freedom. They refer to another branch of the liberal tradition such as that of Alexis de Tocqueville. And here, in Tocqueville's writings, freedom is not seen merely as freedom of the atomist individual detached from his fellow citizens, but as civic freedom embedded in the state as a community of the free. For Tocqueville, it is this civic freedom that protects the individual and society from slipping into harmful individualism and egoism. In Tocqueville's understanding of freedom, then, there is no contradiction between freedom and solidarity. Freedom takes place and is realized in the res publica as a community of destiny and responsibility. So, that's, you remember the definition of solidarity in the Catholic social teaching. And it's the same tradition of Republican liberalism. And in this tradition of Republican liberalism, one would probably understand the pandemic primarily as a common or a communal challenge and the contain containment measures less as a restriction of one's own freedom and more as a joint effort in this struggle. I believe, or I see, uh, that the vast majority of people have understood this, yeah? and, and they understand this as a joint effort in this struggle of the pandemic. However, there is a minority that refuses to do so to show this solidarity either out of laziness or out of deviant convictions. In principle, of course, a liberal society must indeed accept and tolerate denial and even distasteful views and attitudes. But this is not without limits. If the community itself or its fundamental values are undermined and endangered by deviant or even hostile behavior, then the free state, in order to preserve the freedom of all, may also enforce civic solidarity from the individual if no milder means are available to avert the danger to essential 
public interests. Compulsory vaccination in a pandemic can therefore be just as justified as compulsory military service in war.